SpaceX and Dish Network are going to war over 12 gigahertz spectrum. And yesterday, SpaceX even sent out a letter to all Starlink customers urging them to call Congress to lobby for them to go in their direction. Just what's going on? We got the details. Hi, I'm Chris at the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on some of the behind the scenes wrangling that is going on over, well, what is potentially cellular spectrum. In particular, the 12 gigahertz spectrum that is used by Starlink for their downlink from the satellites. Now this 12 gigahertz spectrum is also used by a whole lot of other satellite providers and has always been kind of effectively shared by these providers because the satellites are all in different direction. They have tight, narrow beams coming down and the dishes are aimed up and it, well, it just kind of works. It's satellite spectrum. But this 12 gigahertz spectrum long, long ago was also licensed for terrestrial video broadcast usage, basically um, satellite TV, but broadcast from urban towers instead of from satellites in space. And well, that technology never really took off. It's really been deployed next to nowhere. And well, the company that owns most of that spectrum licensed for terrestrial use is Dish Network. And they're now lobbying the FCC saying, hey, let us use that spectrum for 5G cellular to help complement and add to their project genesis and their future 5G network rollout. So they're saying, hey, you know, we have licenses to this spectrum. We're allowed to use it on Earth. Can we use it for 5G instead of for video broadcast? And well, Dish says it won't cause any issues with all the satellite providers that are out there. SpaceX is saying that Upwards of 70% of Starlink customers will see complete and total outages if Dish's plan is approved. Well, why? What's going on? What's, what's, what's up with this? Well, the difference between a single, you know, basically TV broadcast tower using this spectrum is very, very different than having, you know, potentially thousands of cell towers and then hundreds of thousands or more of mobile devices, cell phones, hotspots, and everything else using the spectrum broadcasting all over the place, potentially causing interference with the satellite dishes that are nearby. So both DISH and SpaceX have basically commissioned their own studies saying, DISH saying, no, there's no worries, there's not going to be any significant interference, and SpaceX saying the sky is falling. If you approve this, Starlink will be useless for a lot of people in a lot of places. Um, in particular, SpaceX is pointing out that Dish's assumption is that only 1% of Starlink customers would be in urban areas, and the vast majority would be out in extreme rural places where Nobody has any intention of building cell towers, so of course there wouldn't be any interference. SpaceX is pointing out that, well, right now they're seeing 13% of their customers in urban areas, um, a significant number in suburban areas, and only like 45% are in rural areas. So they're saying, don't lock us out of the urban and suburban market. And well, for nomads like us who want to take Starlink roaming and travel to different places, you don't want to have to worry about, well, I'm too urban for my Starlink to work. I'm too close to a city. I'm getting interference now. So there is real potential and there are real issues being waged here. Now, both companies are waging an all out lobbying war. Um, Dish is kind of the main advocate between a, a 5G for 12 gigahertz coalition that has got a whole lobbying organization. And now SpaceX has en enlisted all of their customers and had put up a lobbying form of like how to do kind of form letters to Congress and the FCC saying, go this way, go that way, go this way, go that way. You can pick a side if you want to have your voice heard. This is actually really going to come down to Congress and the FCC. So you can decide whether you're Team Dish or Team SpaceX. If you want to read their technical analysis and see who you believe and what which way you're called to, um, we're going to put links up to both of these uh, advocacy groups, and you can decide which way you want to go. What's important to you? But the important thing to imagine, you know, to keep in mind for consumers is this is an FCC decision that is going to be made in the near future about the future of this spectrum, but the actual impacts are going to be years and years away. There is no defined 12 gigahertz 5G cellular band. So once the FCC approves this, this still has to be incorporated into the 5G standards, and then it will be years beyond that before any equipment even supports this new 12 gigahertz 5G band. So 
This is kind of a long-term thing. It's going to take a while to have a real impact. But the decision the FCC makes today will actually, you know, play play a role in future connectivity, potentially the future of how well satellite systems can deal with interference or whether there's going to be this whole new range of frequency, mid, mid band frequency that cellular can expand onto. So it's an interesting issue. It's kind of interesting to see something that is normally handled completely out of the consumer eye, wrangling over frequencies, spilling over into a public lobbying effort. And well, if you wanna have your voice heard, now's your opportunity. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.